next presenter is Pat Smarto, who is a landowner and a realtor, a land lakefront owner and a realtor specializing in waterfront properties. She is chair of the Fox Waterway Agency Advisory Committee, and I'm excited to hear about the agency's recently completed watershed plan, which I actually heard about last night. <laughs> very, very recently completed. Back. Everybody watching at home. I'll make sure that works. Yeah, give me a second here. A little technical difficulties. It's my fault. Right. We had to manage two Zooms yesterday, and we understand. We felt, we feel your pain. <laughs> there we go. I can find my mouse. All right. There we are. Cool. Thank you. You bet. Good morning. As we said, I am part of the advisory committee with the Fox Waterway Agency, and I'm just going to give you a quick update on the watershed plan. Uh, watershed plan. There oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> and what we've accomplished since we were here last year. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying the right arrow. There we go. Right. Okay. So the history of our watershed plan, the Fox Waterway Agency identified several years ago that the area that we are responsible for needed a watershed plan in order to be able to pursue funding to take care of the issues within the system. Um, we took two shots at it. In the second shot, we were able to receive the grant in July of 2022, and the project began, and it's been a, a fun two years for everyone. The actual watershed plan was submitted to the IEPA at the end of January and was finalized and approved in February. And we actually did our public sessions just yesterday presenting the watershed plan. First thing we had to do is figure out what did we want to accomplish. Uh, our primary and top goal was we want clear water. If anyone's been on the chain, you understand that we have fairly murky water and it would be our goal that you could actually stand at the shoreline and maybe be able to look two feet down and see your feet. Um, we also need to get rid of all these excess nutrients that are in the system. Um, it causes algal growth and excessive plant growth, so we need to get it out of the system. We want it clean enough that people can enjoy recreational activities on the chain. We want people to boat, we want people to swim, we want people to fish and be able to eat the fish. We need to engage our community so that they can be involved the three of us that are on the advisory committee that have been part of this over the last two years, um, and I'm gonna shout out to Ann Baston and Rob Bryson, who's not here. Um, there's only so much we can do and we need our community engaged. And then we also need access to the waterway. We need land to be able to get to the waterway to do the monitoring and to do the projects needed. Nobody wants to be an all red map. <clears throat> but we're the all red map. <laughs> um, we have uh, impairments across our entire system. Uh, for the EPA measurements, our aesthetic quality is bad. We have excess phosphorus. We have excess suspended solids. Our fish consumption is very limited because of mercury and PCBs. And our impairment, and it's great to come here and hear that people north of us are also working on this because we do get loading external to our watershed we get loading from within our watershed, and we have issues with internal loading as well. This is great because I was too long when I did this this morning, so I don't have to explain TMDL. All I have to say is we need a TMDL diet. We have too much nitrogen, we have too much phosphorus, we have too much suspended solids, and we estimate that our bacteria levels are far too high. There really isn't enough monitoring for bacteria on the chain. There are a few public beaches that get tested, but overall, we need to improve that so we can get accurate data. So where are we? We're that little yellow part in the overall Fox River watershed. We have 13 interconnected lakes. We're part of this 1,200 square mile upstream drainage. Our planning area is 33,000 acres, which is a little bit of the watershed, but obviously very important to us. We have 13 municipalities and communities within that watershed, and we have two counties represented. Drilling down a little bit more, we took four hucks 
And two of those, as was just mentioned, including the Channel Lake watershed, actually straddle the border between Illinois and Wisconsin. Our study area only included below the Illinois state line. So we've got Bassett Creek, Channel Lake, Nipissing Lake, Fox River, which is our biggest talk of the bunch, and Pistakey Lake. There's 18 miles of stream within this watershed. There's 210 miles of shoreline, which our consultant from Northwater and a staff member from the waterway got in a boat two years ago in April in the cold and bravely looked at every single mile of shoreline. Um, we need obviously local actions within our watershed to address our problems, but we also contribute downstream to the issues in the Fox River and um, we have some contributions from north of us. We're kind of unique in watersheds. We don't have a ton of ag, but we do have a ton of water. 25% of the area that was studied is water. We're fortunate that we have 20% uh, of the area is being forested. We've got 15% in open space. We've got 13% in wetlands. These are all good news stories. Um, but 13% of our watershed is impervious surfaces. So they contribute highly to runoff. Another good news story for us is that we've got a huge state park at the north part of our watershed planning area, which is the Chain of Lakes State Park. That's 6,000 acres that is currently managed by the state. And we also have several forest preserves that are managed by our um, Lake County, as well as some local municipalities. So what did we find? Really, probably none of this should be surprising to anyone in this room, but we have sources both external, internal, and then internal to the watershed, and then actually within the nutrients trapped within our water. Our phosphorus is elevated across the board. Nitrogen is elevated, but has been trending lower, which is good news. Um, the chain is a great sink for everything that comes from north of us and west and east of us. We capture a lot of it. Some of it we send downstream, but a lot of it stays inside the chain. Um, I mentioned bacteria found at beaches, and again, we need to do better monitoring the bacteria. Um, a big problem for us is nutrient resuspension. We get a lot of churn. We've got a lot of boats out there. And the other internal loading occurs from the sediment that is the bottom of some of our deeper lakes that are um, in an anoxic, I always have a problem with that word, and uh, that allows that phosphorus to be released. And another big piece is we've got a ton of septic systems within our watershed, and many of which are fairly close to the water, and I'll give a little more detail about that. And then lake shoreline erosion produces a ton of sediment into our system. So if we look at the four areas that we're trying to reduce, nitrogen, phosphorus, sediment, and bacteria, um, direct runoff is a huge contributor. 48% of the nitrogen load that comes in comes from direct runoff within our watershed. Next one down, lake shoreline erosion. Again, this was kind of a shocking number for all of us that 88% of the load comes from shoreline erosion within the system. Our septic systems, and again, this is an estimate, contribute 98% of the bacteria load. Um, the other thing is those lovely Canadian geese that like to sit on our beaches are a problem. Um, love geese. <laughs> um, but septic systems are something we certainly can address. And then the biggest contributor to our phosphorus is internal lake loading. That's the release of the phosphorus that's sitting within our system already. Um, a number that I just want to focus on quickly is agriculture is a very small percentage of our land area. However, it, the opportunity within those farms to do some reduction in lower cost is really great. So we're certainly focusing on agriculture as well. So here was the number that I think blew all of our minds when it came in. So there's 2000 feet of banks that are giving us 20% of our sediment load. If you drill down a little bit further, they're able to identify five miles of it that's contributing 91% of the sediment load. There are natural areas that are losing six and seven feet a year based on their analysis. That's a lot of load coming into the system. So we've already identified the entities that are responsible for that property and have begun discussions with them. Septic systems. We don't have a lot of coverage. So only five of the eight municipalities actually have some level of this. 
And I see a lot of pictures taken, just FYI, this is part of the total presentation we gave yesterday that had 558 slides, and that'll be on the um, Waterways website. So you'll have access to all of them. Um, five of our nine on corporate areas do not have any sewer at all. And um, the village of Fox Lake has the most connections, but it really isn't a lot of our shoreline within the system. So Northwater took the map, took the overlay of where are sewers available and actually went to each and every parcel and identified who does or doesn't have a septic. So they came up with 80, almost 8,900 septic systems. 86% are within a thousand feet of the shoreline. And on average, they're 579 feet. That's a lot of septics and septic fields in the floodplain. And yesterday's presentation, someone told us who works in that business of servicing them, that the estimate is that there are 200 that have pipes that go straight into the water. So that's not good. So the um, North Water used a kind of a standard that eight and a half percent of septic systems are failing at any given point in time. So they determined geez, five minutes. All right, that there's probably 754 failing systems on our waterway. So what, we can, what can we do? We gotta reduce runoff, obviously, that goes without saying. We need to support sewer expansion where it's possible. The county has done a study on that, but as someone said in our meeting, that could be rainbows and unicorns, that sewers are actually gonna make it to all of these locations. So we need to continue to educate the public to properly maintain their septic systems. We gotta get a water product quality program going. There is testing that's done, but it's not frequently enough, to be honest. We have to work with entities both within and outside of our watershed, and we have to seek funding. That's everybody's issue. They identified over 3,000 projects within this watershed plan. There will be a map available. It has not yet been linked onto the waterway site that'll allow you to drill down to specific parcels and the projects that are recommended for those locations. And it is spread across community, homeowners, the agency itself, shoreline owners, our lake communities, and the natural area owners. So what do we need to do to be successful and what was identified within this plan? We've gotta get phosphorus down 82%, 45% reduction in nitrogen, 68% reduction in sediment, 70% approximately estimated reduction in bacteria. These are big numbers, um, but I, I believe we can make progress over the next 10 years to hit these numbers. Problem is it all costs a lot of money. It, this used to say estimated costs get out your checkbook, but we thought that was a little harsh, but it really is true. Um, in order to do the um, runoff and shoreline projects, 49 million. About half of that is permeable pavement projects, which are quite expensive, but we can encourage local municipalities, there's a park going in in one of our townships that they are putting in permeable pavement. So we have to find the opportunities where we can. Um, sediment removal, which is something that the waterway does currently, but their budget is about 2 million a year and it's estimated that this would cost 875 million to remove the sediment that's in the system. It's just a huge number and you know, kind of a scary number but we gotta take it in little bites. The sewer system, the study said is $185 million. Again, our Lake County representatives are doing everything they can to pursue money from every possible source. But needless to say, funding's a challenge. Funding's a challenge for everybody in this room to do the projects that they wanna do. And we're hoping through this 319 plan that we can pursue monies wherever humanly possible. So it's all about little increments having an accumulated impact. We've got eight municipalities, we've got nine unincorporated areas, we have seven townships, we're meeting with all of them. And what we're asking them is to just do one project a year. If each one does one project a year over the next 10 years, we'll get 240 of them complete. That's a lot. And that could be an, just an amazing difference in our system if they're able to accomplish that. And then we're also asking them in any project that they do, look for opportunities to put in a feature or something to improve the water quality. And then we're asking, we're putting a bit of this on the shoulders of our homeowners. Do 2000 projects. That might be 10 rain barrels. That could be 15 rain gardens. Every little incremental change that happens within our watershed is gonna have a difference on the water. 
And then why? Why do we need to do this? First off, the chain of lakes is a huge economic driver for our county. All of the businesses that support the recreation on the chain from the marine owners, the boat sales, the gas sales, all of that is critical to all of Northern Lake County. Um, if it's impaired, people can't have fun on the water anymore. You can't drive your boats, you can't fish, you can't give that experience to your children, which I was fortunate enough to be able to give to my son, and I want him to be able to give it to whatever he has down the road, hopefully not soon. Um, and um, we need those businesses that support the businesses that support the recreation. I mean, it's really dominoes. If we lose this, what impact it's gonna have. Um, and we want people like I did this morning, I'm fortunate enough to live on the lake, to be able to look out my window and see an eagle landing in a tree. I mean, if this falls, that's gone, and we don't want to lose that. So um, lastly, and I didn't add this, somebody did, um, in real estate, it will certainly affect the waterfront homeowners' real estate dramatically, and we just can't let that happen. And I just got my stop, so perfect. <laughs>